Hi guys! Today we're making number block 60. Yes, we are going to get through all these tens, I promise. So here we go, we've got 20 wooden blocks in each of these packs, which I bought from eBay. And these are 20 millimeter wooden cubes. And I've got my trusty favorite Gorilla Glue, which is, it's lasted forever and it's just really, really strong. Um, and I've got a paintbrush. This paintbrush will come in very useful. Don't use really expensive paintbrushes for doing, uh, using it for glue, because you might ruin the bristles anyway. So I'm just going to empty these out. This is easy because if there's 20 in each pack, we just need three packs and there should be 60 wooden blocks. And um, I found that the easiest way to work with the glue is to just squeeze some out rather than trying to apply it directly. Oh, and here is number 60. 60 is really cool. It's purple like number six, of course. And also we've got these really cool dots on um, her face and she's got these red eyes with lashes. So I'm just using it. It's just a piece of... Um, cardboard I was going to throw into the bin anyway so I'm just reusing it as my little tray to stick the glue and I'm sure I've shown you guys this before but the way that I like to stick these number blocks these larger ones uh, rather than balancing them I do the, the bottom row it's like you're laying bricks so I stick that together first and make sure it's nice and firm and I just flip the bricks around if I feel like they're not you know as straight as they can be and then I do a layer of glue on top of that entire strip it just saves time rather than doing it brick by brick and then you only have to put glue on one side then as you go across and if there's any excess you just wipe it away with your finger it's fine it's best to wipe it away it's still wet don't wait for it to dry because when the uh, gorilla glue dries it is very very uh, strong and it is hard to get off then so it's okay look how lovely and neat this is so i'm just going now these blocks they're not perfectly cut they're not absolutely 100 percent identical so if you're going across and you suddenly find that one is sticking out more than the other you know you can always compensate you can flip the brick around until it looks flatter or you can compensate by putting it next to a block that fits a bit better if you know what i mean so just see how you go i'm trying to make it you know fairly neat and i really want it to be able to stand up by itself because sometimes with the bigger blocks um because they're so big they can be wobbly too but so far so good and because Gorilla Glue, when it's still wet, is really slippy, you can just push the blocks around if they, like, they're not drying properly. Oh, another good point I've never mentioned before. When it's drying, try to dry it completely flat with something heavy on it. Don't dry it standing up because then it will warp and it will change shape. So here's my number 60. I have left it to dry overnight. It's a nice solid piece now. It's very hard once it's dried. It's really, really good glue. And I'm going to use a white acrylic paint to paint all over and you can use any brand you want you don't have to use an expensive one this one was about two pounds so it's not too expensive you get a lot and it's very opaque which means I don't have to worry about doing another layer so I'm gonna apply this all over to make it nice and even first because when I first started doing this I did the base coat with the proper colors and the top coat and I thought oh, what's the point I might as well just cover it all with the white paint to make it look smooth so I'm doing that and do the side and then you have to let it dry before you flip it over and do the back like that i look like i didn't let it dry i'm sure i let it dry before i flipped it over honest i'm just checking i've got the right one and i'm going to use purple but it's not a purple purple is it it's not a dark purple so i'm going to use a little bit of this and this kit that I bought, it has lots of little tubes of acrylic paint because it's very pigmented. You don't need to use that much. So again, I'm mixing it with the white, the trusty white. Because if there's any color that you're going to buy lots of, you probably want to buy the white because we use a lot of it when we're mixing up our own shades. And just keep mixing and mixing until it turns to that purple um, that I think looks similar to number 60, which is still a bit too light. So a bit more purple keep mixing and mixing and I'm using a little paper cup here which is recyclable and it just is a little bit less messy a little less cleaning up afterwards and I keep going painting it and yeah now these paints do look a little bit darker when they dry but every paint is different so you might want to test it if you're not sure just painting it Okay, and after I painted all that, then I move on to the face, okay? So this is what number 60's face is. quite a simple face, not much too much, but the red lashes. So I'm using, um, I'm going to use my favorite pens, which is the Tombow coloring pens. Use whatever pens you like, whatever colors you have. I'm using a bright red. I'm going to go on the eyes and the lashes like this. The only tricky thing about the lashes is that you have to, um, 
cut it out. That's where some fine scissors would be really helpful because you need to get in between those gaps there. So we're just doing this. And I'm going to the other side and the mouth is black and I think it's also red. I'm just going to cut out the features. The mouth is pink, guys, not red pink. I'm just going to cut it out. And that's perfect. And um, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to make the lighter color, which is the dark. So you see, it's dried. It's actually dried a much darker shade of purple. So now I have to mix up a light lilac to make the dots. And I don't think number 60 always has the dice dots on its face. It depends, but we're going to do it this time around. So using the same shade of uh, purple, I'm going to mix it up. It has to be lighter, remember? So I put another little dot more purple and I thought it had to be just a teeny weeny bit more darker and then I'm ready to do the circles. Now my first thing I did is what I did, okay, I used the paintbrush and I thought, can I draw a perfect circle? And the answer is absolutely not. I cannot do that with a floppy paintbrush. then tried a square headed brush to see if I can make the circle shape again far too messy they're not even at all and then I had a idea so I found a pencil one of my kids pencils sorry about that and I dipped the end of it into the paint and you see it actually makes a really neat circle I'm just using the end of the pencil obviously the side that hasn't been sharpened but you can dot this on really quickly and it makes really nice even little circles and it just goes with this pattern which is six uh, two rows of three and then again at the bottom And then I'm going to use a purple Posca pen and go up and down and just mark out some of the rows. And then across the other way. And all the way to the top. And we're going to go across there as well. And we're just going to stick on the facial features very carefully and the little tiny mouth <laughs> that 60 has got. It's kind of right in the middle there. And there you go, there's our number 60. I think it's pretty cool and it's time to buy himself too. 
so i really hope you guys enjoyed that video please remember to subscribe and i will see you again next time goodbye